we got to Guys, really quickly, I'm going to go over the uh, Facebook questions. All right, low volume training or high volume training best for size? I like high volume training and then switching to low volume training and then switching back. I don't think one or the other creates size. Um, I think that switching back and forth, and I have proven that, is that I've grown a ton of size over just switching um, from 6 to 8 reps to doing 12 to 15 rep schemes. Uh, Kenny asked me, what's your opinion on decline press? Is it a lift you think should be formed regularly? Um, it all depends. It depends if you're doing flat presses too, and you're doing ver uh, machine variations, it doesn't really matter. Um, you only have two parts of your chest, your upper and your lower. So doing inclines obviously works your upper. If you do it right and make sure that your ass is against the seat and, um, flat presses, for example, work more of your lower and decline obviously works the lower. So you're having two working your lower, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm making a video, mom. Fuck. Um, oh, it's my dad. All right. So, hey, Bob, I was wondering how you got involved in the YouTube game. Well, I was worked for GNC for a while. And then when I became an accountant, I quit GNC. And then I was like, God, what's missing in this job? And I was like, oh, it's helping people and nutrition and what I love. So I was like, hey, Nick Wright, I'm starting a YouTube channel. Get fucking ready because I'm about to get more subscribers than you. Hey, Bob, I was wondering how you got in Involved in the YouTube game. When are you, you and Nick Wright training again? When he gets off his lazy powerlifting ass and decides to get some freaking muscle gains. Uh, what do you do when you hit a plateau? How do you deal with injuries? I make sure that I stretch plenty and I make sure that I do a lot of the exercises with lacrosse ball. I make sure that my fascia is warmed up and then I make sure that. Um, I ain't trying to lift that heavy. I make sure that I get good squeezes for that period of time. A lot of things can be prevented if you if you warm up regularly, you know? And that's what I make sure that I give myself at least 15 to 20 minutes to warm up regularly. And that's what a lot of people don't do. A lot of people just jump into it, and that's how you snap your shit up. And making sure that you have good form and everything's tight. What's your body measurements, Bob? I'll tell you when I'm done with this cup, brother. Okay, I know bodybuilding is all about being symmetrical. My question is, is what are two party parts that will stand out the most? Uh, small ass friggin' legs and having small shoulders. It's guaranteed to stand out. It's because it's the things that are going to make you, you're going to have the hourglass shape, you know, bowed out legs, tiny waist, big shoulders, and big lats. So if you don't have that, then you're fucked. So make sure that you train shoulders and make sure you train his legs for sure. I'm a father of four, 36-year-old, and I also lift. I just want to say, man, love the videos and positive vibe. Well, PC Fitness Collectibles, freaking love you. Love your support, man. Thanks a lot. And, dude, lifting when you're 36 and have kids, many props, man. Um, inspiration right there. Ricardo, what's your approach when it comes to back and delt development? Making sure that I go heavy and making sure that I'm going six to eight reps um, and then making sure that I drop set at the end and then incorporating exercises where you're forced, um, to really squeeze on your lats, for example, and you're targeting specifically those. And I do a lot of side lateral, side lateral. So you guys are going to get so on me for that one. Um, lateral raises for, for my delts. For example, for my back, I do pen lay rows, you know, and that, and that pull, uh, makes you pull it straight off the ground, dead weight, and you get a really good squeeze on your lats. So that's something I do for lap development. Check out some of my vi workout videos too. You'll see some of the exercises that I like to do daily. Um, what's your opinion on squatting with no shoes on? It's better than squatting with tennis shoes on. Um, if you can't afford squat shoes, I say barefoot or or chucks because you can power through your heels. And you know it's still not ideal, but it's better than nothing. Um, What's your opinion on M-Sten RX? I don't know anything about this product, but I'm already going to say that I'm not going to recommend it because I'm not a huge proponent of taking a bunch of fancy supplements. I just do protein, um, multivitamin, fish oil, um, maybe a light fat burner every once in a while, um, just for energy usually, and then I'll take a uh, digestive enzyme. What's the awesome chicken crock pot recipe? I'm filming it tomorrow. Um... 
When starting a cutting cycle, how much carbs should be reduced? What are the best macros? That's a really hard question, man, because I don't know who, what your measurements are. I don't know what you look like, how your body reacts to stuff. Some people react to carbs really well. Some people react to fat really well, you know, high fat, or some people don't react to carbs at all very well. So it all depends on you. That's why I'd hire a coach if you don't know your body yet. On a cut, when beginning to hit fat loss plateau, should I drop calories first or increase cardio first? Um, I would start with just increasing a little bit of, of cardio um, just so that you can keep the most muscle as possible and then as it comes, drop off some calories as well. Just make sure you're not losing too much weight too fast. With a lot of big YouTubers, Omar, Nick Wright, Chelsea Lifts, either moving their focused powerlifting or promoting a sport as a whole, have you ever considered going that route? If not, what keeps you on the more traditional bodybuilding program? It's what I love to do. Um, I do like powerlifting. I do like lifting heavy ass weight, you know, and I've seen my progression through these years. But um, right now I'm going on my bodybuilding journey and you guys are coming with me. Um, from there, who knows where I'll go. Maybe I'll do a, maybe you guys will see me in a little singlet, hugging my nuts, no undershirt, rocking that shit. Or maybe I won't. You never know. So stay tuned. I might do CrossFit. Who knows? I might become very skinny. Like Max Tuning and be a swimmer's body. You don't know. You don't know. All right. What do you think of an approach to an alkaline diet? I believe that your body is made up of 75% water. You know, you can... Um, that you can affect your alkaline levels and your acidity by the foods that you eat. So I definitely like to balance having high acidic foods and then having base-like foods. Um, it's just important for a healthy body and to prevent cancer. So I wouldn't go too nuts with it. Just make sure that you have a balance and just know what's what. Like those people that eat chicken and rice all the time with no vegetables and they're like, I don't eat vegetables and stuff like that. No, I make sure that I get plenty of vegetables, plenty of vitamins, antioxidants, and stuff like that. Uh, flat dumbbell press or bench for chest mass? Oh, that is such a hard question. Both essential, yes. Um, but if I'm going to pick one, I'd pick flat dumbbells. I know, it's rough. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me with that one. Which is my preference. I like flat dumbbells better, even though bench is a sick pump too. But you do a lot with flat, flat dumbbell, that's for sure. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry if it was too long. Go to LimpusIron.com. Check out my biography. Follow me on Instagram. Also, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and make sure that you subscribe and like if you like this video. All right. Later, guys.